Hi, I'm going to be talking now about overflow and underflow errors and how they can cause issues in calculations in binary. We need to be aware of these. There have been lots of examples over the years of programmers not bothering to think about these errors or not even being aware of the errors and causing big problems in their code. I think the most famous example, as you're seeing the tail end of it now, was of a rocket in 1996 called the Ariane 5 which exploded just after liftoff because some of the software running inside it encountered an overflow error and nothing was done to try and fix it. So thankfully no one died, this was a uh, unmanned rocket but it cost estimated $500 million just because someone did not properly handle an overflow error. So let's talk about what that is so we can try and avoid it happening to us. An overflow error occurs when a result of a calculation has got a magnitude too big to be represented with the number of bits you have available. So you end up with a number too big to be able to fit into how many bits you have available. That rocket, that error occurred because there was a calculation which was too big to fit into 16 bits they had allocated to it. So a really common example of where this occurs is when you are adding two numbers together which have the same sign and so the result will require too many bits. Likewise, with multiplication, multiplying two numbers together can result in an overflow. And it's important to say that the magnitude is a key part of our definition. It can You can have overflow of negative numbers too. So if you've got a really small negative number, that can also cause an overflow as well, which is a bit confusing. So focus on the magnitude, ignore any sign when it comes to overflows, and that will make things a little bit easier. So don't think of negative numbers here, ignore the negative. If it's a small negative number, i.e. has a big magnitude, it can certainly overflow. And to give you an example of how it can occur from binary addition, here are two 8-bit binary numbers in 2's complement. So if I do this addition very quickly, we are going to have carries, which are fine. Carries are fine within our 8 bits. The issue comes when we exceed our allocation. So here, I am carrying a 1 into my 8th bit, which actually is inside our allocation, it's inside 8 bits. The issue being that effectively this is our not quite a sign bit, but this is wrapping the number round into a negative number. So the two numbers here are 121 and 106, I worked that out earlier, and so the result should be 227, but actually we get a negative result. This result is actually not 227, but minus 29. So nowhere near our correct value. That is an overflow error. Clearly that's incorrect, right? So that would potentially ruin our calculation and cause lots of issues. The way we would try and stop it happening is by checking beforehand to see if we're going to exceed our range. Our range in this case would be, with 8 bits, would be minus 128 to positive 127. And so any result outside of this range either smaller or bigger, would cause an overflow error. So potentially, if I result in a number which is negative 129, that would also cause an overflow error. You know, we're thinking about the magnitude, ignoring any sign. That magnitude is bigger than we can fit, therefore it's an overflow error. Now to show you an example with floating point, let's say I've got 5 bits as a mantissa and 4 bits as an exponent. If I want to figure out what my safe range is, I can find out my largest possible number which in this case is 120, where I'm maximizing my mantissa and maximizing my exponent. The zero at the start of both in the MSB position is showing it's a positive number, we're still in two's complement here. And the smallest negative number is negative 128. You can see our range goes a little bit skewed with floating point. And because this is our sort of safe range, anything outside of this range is going to lead to an overflow error. So adding 5 to 120, for example, would lead to an overflow because 125 is outside of this range. Equally, subtracting 2 from negative 1 to 8 would also cause an overflow because it's outside of our range. Ignoring the, the sign, looking for magnitude, it's outside of our safe range. It's too big, in other words. Now, the way overflow errors are handled can vary quite a lot. It should be handled, I should say that, you know, you, it's, it's not an error which should just ruin your program, you should be able to handle it relatively straightforwardly. So often an interrupt will occur in the hardware, maybe in a CPU, 
the status register will have the overflow bit being set. That's an overflow. And so as a programmer, you can respond to it and handle it in your code. Equally, in some cases it will be clamped, which means anything outside the range will be just limited to the range itself. So this example of minus 130 would be set just to minus 128. So you'd go to the nearest safe value effectively. The example of 125 would be set to just 120. Instead, you're clamping it. You don't let it go into the unsafe range. Or equally, in the IEEE standard in particular, they're sort of treated as infinity. And so either positive infinity or negative infinity, which can cause confusion, but that's another way to handle these errors. In addition to an overflow error, we have underflow errors, which occur when, as you might expect, a result has a magnitude too small this time to be represented with the number of bits available. Overflow is your magnitude is too big, underflow magnitude is too small. And again, be careful with negative numbers. We're focusing on magnitude here. So minus 500 is a very small negative number, whereas minus 0 0.005 is a bigger number than minus 500. But overflow is more likely to occur with minus 500. Underflow will be with minus 0 0.005 because we're ignoring the sign. If magnitude here is, is small, magnitude here is big. So underflow errors occur usually when you get too close to zero. So it's approaching zero where these errors occur. And this will often happen if you are, say, subtracting two similar valued numbers or dividing two similar valued numbers. You get close to zero, you get a very fractional number which cannot always be represented. To show you an example of this in action, just jumping to floating point this time, here we've got a, again, still a five bit mantissa and a four bit exponent. To find out our bounds in terms of our safe range, we want to first of all find our smallest positive number before it was our largest positive number. Now it's our smallest one, which in this case is roughly 0 0.0019531. I had to limit the number of decimal points there. You see our mantis is a little bit funny. You might think our mantissa might be like 0 0.0001. That might be our smallest mantissa, but actually that's not normalized. So this is the best we can do when it's still normalized. Our largest negative number, as opposed to like before, which was our smallest negative number, our largest possible negative number is, again, roughly minus 0.0021973. Again, we've got to make sure we normalize our mantissa. But effectively, anything inside these two numbers, anything inside this range would lead to an underflow error. Any result going between these two numbers would lead to an underflow because they can't be represented. We haven't got space to represent these, these numbers inside this range. This would cause errors in your results. Your results would be wrong, potentially, and it might even cause more serious errors unless it was handled by an interrupt or by clamping or some other technique like that.